This is T, fractions and square roots, and uh, I'm just going to punch through a few examples for you. Uh, first one, what is the improper fraction of the shaded areas? Now, improper fraction is where you'll essentially have a number and then some kind of fraction, numerator over denominator. And that's called the improper form because it's not useful in any way, shape, or form in math, except for when you're trying to explain something to someone that doesn't really understand math. But it just confuses people when they're first starting off in math. So uh, that's why they call it the improper fra uh, form. And uh, you just look over here, you can see that you have a whole circle shaded, so we'll just give ourselves a 1 from that. If there were 3, you would give yourself 3. And then right here, um, basically what I always recommend doing is drawing a little picture and try and replicating it with uh, like pie slices. So I can just cut it into four pieces like this and then I realize that if I shade in three, I get the same shading. So three fourths because there are three out of the four pie pieces filled. Um, yeah, I know it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's go on to the next one. Find the square root of the following fraction, 36 over 16. So, if you need to find the square root of this, square root of it, then you can actually break it down. Just do the square root of the top versus the square root of the bottom. So, square root of the top is square root of 36 over square root of 16. Well, we know that 6 times 6 is 36. So the square root of 36 is just going to be 6. And it's the same way with 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So square root of 16 is 4. And that equals 3 over 2, which equals 1.5. Now, I just recommend that you kind of uh, go through your multiple t uh, multiplication tables and finding out which ones are all... Um, all the square roots. So, you know, 2 squared equals 4, 3 squared equals 9, uh, 4 squared equals 16, 5 squared equals 25, then, you know, 36, 49, dot, 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 right? So, that's what I recommend you do just so that you can um, familiarize yourself. And it goes 64, 81, 100, um, 121, 144, dot, 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 169. Uh, and just memorize them, and that way you can, if someone says, hey, tell me the square root of 7, then you'll know that uh, it's going to be somewhere in between 3 and 2. So it just gives you a nice feel for square roots and what the answer, what you expect the answer to be. And in that case, square root of 7 is somewhere in between, uh, it's between 2 to 3. So you know that. So if someone gives you an answer and they say 3.5, then you know they're wrong. So um, moving on, 6 and 2 thirds minus 1 and 5 sixths. Um, the biggest thing is, a lot of people don't know how to break this down so that you can do it. I just um, recommend getting out of improper form right away. So uh, what you do is you multiply the bottom times the whole number and then add it to the numerator. So denominator times whole number. So in this case, 3 times 6 plus 2. So 3 times 6 is 18 plus 2 is 20. And then you just keep the same denominator. So minus 6 times 1 plus 5 is 11 over 6. So now you just got to get a common denominator. So we're going to multiply this uh, 20 over 3 by, multiply the top and bottom by 2 to get the same common denominator. So 40 over 6 minus 11 over 6. And that's going to equal 29 over 6. And that will be your solution. Uh, let's do one more over here. 1 eighth plus 1 half. Well, just 
simple, get the same common denominator, multiply the top and bottom by 4, because uh, that's all you think about. You say, what, what do I have to multiply 2 to get it to that common denominator? In this case, it's 8, so 2, you would multiply it by 4. So you multiply top and bottom by 4, so it's 4 over 8 equals 5 over 8, 5 eighths. All right, and here's one. A lot of people have a difficulty uh, realizing where they can start and stop, and um, a lot of people like to hate doing this kind of stuff where you're adding and subtracting in fractions. So what they'll do is they'll actually break it down into numerical values, like in this problem, and then bring it back to fractions. And that's usually an easier way of doing it, but... Um, You'll notice that 0.6 plus 0.35, if we just do the math, 0.6 plus 0.35, that equals 0.95. Well, now we've got to bring that back to a fraction. We know that a percent, 1 percent, is equal to 1 percent, so per 100. So if I... Um, wanted to do that, then what I have to do is I have to take my 0.95 and realize that that is the same thing as 0.95 over 1. Well, then let's multiply the top and bottom by 100 so that I can have 100 on the bottom and find out what the top will be, and that will be my percentage. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 100, and that will be 95 over 100. And that is 95%. But now, since we want it in uh, fr uh, fractions, what we can do is we can take that 95 over 100, and we just divide both top and bottom by 5. We're just trying to simplify it now at this point, since it's already in a fraction, right? So let's divide it by 5, both sides. And that will equal 19 over 20. Simple. Sorry, 19 over 20. You can see it right there. So, um, that, that I just went and showed you how to get it to percents as well. But, uh, yeah, this is how you get it to fractions. They're all the same techniques. And uh, you'll realize that the decimal system, um, where you have these points and such, that just means a decimal based off of 10. So... 0.6 is the same thing as 6 over 10. So, But uh, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you found this useful.